So now the first question, what exactly is composition? We use composition in order to avoid, you can say, avoid inheritance. Now inheritance, it serves a lot of purposes, but then again, uh, it gets kind of confusing in case if your hierarchy is three or four levels deep. So the other option is to go for just compositions. Now, how do they work? Well, they work, for example, you have your class graph. Now we're gonna create another class called subplots. What we're gonna do is we want subplots class to have access to all this, whatever is there in the graph class. So how are we gonna do it? Well, how exactly do we have access to these ones? Even if we are not talking about composition, how do we get access to all these? We get access to all these through our object. So we, so we make object out of the class graph and then that object has access to each and every attribute and method. So I'm going to make a class class and I'm going to call it sub underscore plot. Yeah. For the moment, I'm just going to put pass in it. So now we already have this class subplot. Now you want graph to have access to the subplot. But what is subplot going to do? Subplot is going to create your subplots, right? So what we need to do is we need to initialize this. Quickly put the init function in it. And that's how you, so you take away this pass, right? So what is it init function doing? For example, if you're creating an object of the subplot class, so that's going to have your X axis and Y axis. So now what we need to do is this is for the initialization. Okay. And we need to make another function, which is known as make subplots. So that's going to make your subplots, but for subplots to be made, you need your X axis and Y axis, right? And then you'll have to decide how many subplots do you want? So in one figure, what's the matrix that you want? Maybe you don't understand this two by two comma two comma one at all. Well, that's fine. As of now, I'll tell you how to, how this command works. But up until now, you just need to understand we are making another class called subplots and then we are initializing the X axis and Y axis values and then we are making a subplot and then this is also having some parameters problem the problem here is so whenever we are going to make an object so the way the moment you create an object so when you create your plot that should go inside the subplot so that's the problem statement how are we going to achieve that well when you create your object so something that happens automatically that happens through the init function Right. So this is used to initialize stuff. So when you, the moment you create your object, for example, if we go down and when you create your object with these specifications, so these specifications, they go to the cell, which is the memory address of that object. So they automatically, you don't have to invoke the init function. It gets invoked automatically. So same way your method, which is used to make the subplots that should get invoked automatically. So now what you're going to do is you have to call this method, but that method is lying inside the subplot class. So what composition does is it allows you to use another class instead of inheritance. You're using composition. So it allows you in a way to have access to the attributes and methods of this subplot class. So it could be any other class as well. So how does it allow you? Well, Remember I told you when you make an object out of the class, that object has access to everything of that class, right? So it has access to all the attributes and it also has access to all the methods. So that's exactly what we're going to do. We're going to create an object of subplot class inside the class. Now you see whenever we were trying to do the, uh, do the plots. So we were making objects, which was out of the class graph, right? But now inside the class graph, I'm going to make an object of subplot. How would that help? I'll show you in a moment. So now you see self dot object. Plot. So this object, this is the object of this subplot. Okay. So we are naming it OBJ underscore subplot. That's fine. So how is it made? It is made from the obviously the subplot class, which is subplot. And then what are the parameters which is going to be taking? It's going to be taking self dot x axis because those axis, the x axis values and the y values, y axis values for the graph, they're going to be the same, right? They won't be changing. So we already have that. So which is why we are calling it from here. So you just need to pass those values there. And then 
it should also have two arguments which should be taking in the values so that's exactly what's happening so now whenever you pass your x and y values those values are set to the self and you're passing same two values or two iterables to your subplot init function right because you're making an object if it is getting confusing just hang in there i know so compositions they can be really tricky at first but please believe me they're not as hard so you'll get it so it's just the first time it took me around 70 times seven zero so okay back to the point uh so where were we so we have made an object right of the class sub subplot so that object is your new attribute in the class graph how will that help well that will help because new object of the class subplot and then that object has access to inner function and the make subplots method so might as well use it right so how would we use that well we will use this method throughout all these methods so for example we have line graph bar graph and pie chart right pie graph so what i'm gonna do is i'm gonna say so you when you call for the line graph then this pencil top you don't really need it but just let it be there because it's it's always been there so now before you plot whatever you have to plot so we have to call because that plotting has to go into the subplot so you're gonna call that object so this is your attribute now right so this is the attribute through which you're gonna be accessing these attributes or these methods so we just have one method here you can have more methods so that's exactly what we're going to be doing from here okay so now when you say self dot obj subplot dot make subplots that means this is your object right that object has access to make subplots so that's a method so you'll have to use dot separator in order to have access to make subplots correct so now that method is taking in arguments as x and y why is it taking i'll tell you in a moment so you do that and then the control is going to come back so you say plt dot subplot so it's going to give you the position of the subplot when you're creating subplot so the control is going to come back and then we are going to be plotting this because it's lined up so we'll be using the plot function and then it's going to be using the x-axis and y-axis to plot right what is this plt dot show doing well it's not doing anything so might as well take it away okay from here as well from here as well because we are not using it anymore right in same light what i'm gonna do is okay let's just let's just take with line graph as of now so let's create the line graph part because it has got composition in it and let's see if that composition works okay so my plot is equal to these are the specifications for the init function and then my plot one dot pi graph okay we have pi here but we need the line graph so i'm gonna put line okay so watch what happens see so you are meant to be having four figures because you said two by two right one two three and four and now you see we started off with second position if you were starting from the first position then you're gonna get a different graph now so you're getting this on the first side okay and if i was making three then it's gonna be going down so when i run it this graph because i'm giving the starting position as three so this is one two three and four so this graph is going to move down so that's basically this subplot command that's how it works so let's just run it just to prove, prove it so this has come down so that's exactly how subplot is working now you see the beauty of composition all you need to do is you just need to pick this up copy this it might as well paste here okay so then you can get composition for the subplots for the pie graph as well so how it's gonna work so all you need to do is change your object so pie i know it might look very trivial at the moment but maybe in the next lecture you'll see something see this has come down because you are starting it from the third position 
now uh, this might sound a bit confusing as far as composition is concerned but as far as the results which we are getting it might sound look very simple but trust me once we involve for loops here right and once we once we want to populate over i'm itching to do this but i think the video has gone really over the limit so i might as well do it on the next video so once we use the for loop to populate this uh subplot then you'll really see the power like you know what composition can do and once you understand the composition it's not that hard so i'll see you in the next one with the for loop and we'll populate this with just two couple of clicks so let me know what you think about composition and in the next video we'll use loops and we'll really populate this and you know you can really manipulate it trust me compositions they'll they'll really come handy thank you so much bye